And OMG, we have a great show planned for you today with Cindy uh, Kennedy and also Del Billis is going to join us with Liberty HealthShare, and we are going to learn and grow about what it's like to live with Lyme. Are you ready for that? Okay, so fasten your seatbelt. We're going to learn and grow together. I don't know, but I think the music is going to start pretty soon. And there we go. Doesn't it always happen, though? Time to dance, Cindy. We make mistakes, and we live and learn. When life gets tough, and it seems like your best ain't good enough. If okay, you're here we go. Need of hope, you know where I'll be. I'll be right here, right here. And when you need a friend, you can count on me. I'll be right here. This is the place you can always turn to when you need a friend, the Lillian McDermott Show. To reach out to Lillian, visit her on the web at whenyouneedafriend.com. Now let's all learn together. Here's Lillian McDermott. Hello, my listening friend. It's so nice we can meet each other on the air on this beautiful best day ever. And for those of you who are new to the Lynn McDermott Radio Show, this is what the show is about. It is my commitment to provide alternative ways to heal, and it's my mission to make awareness, responsibility, and truth a part of our everyday life. And I hope you, my listening friend, will feel empowered to live the life of your dreams. Now, I start the show like this every time, but today there's a lot of heaviness in the hearts of Florida. There's a lot of issues that are going on. The show that we have planned today, which we will talk about, is about Lyme disease, living with Lyme. You've heard me say, uh, or Dr. Richard Horowitz, who is a friend of the Lil McDermott radio show, he comes on every other month and he talks about Lyme disease. He's an expert on Lyme disease. He's also the author of the book, How Can I Get Better? And we've given this book away over and over again on the show. Well, today we have, and, and, and you've also heard Dr. Horowitz call Lyme disease the great imitator. Well, Cindy Kennedy has been, th- has been a thriving physician's assistant, and although she's helped many heal, she was not able to heal herself, and so she couldn't figure it out, and so many trial and error and and digging deep and with that soul shovel that we talk about on the show, but no one could figure out what was going on. And this is why I say we need to become our own MD, our medical detective. And so um, this is what we need to focus on today is what do we need to do? She's also a naturopathic practitioner. Um, I, I believe that that's the, the terminology, NP. And, and so today, not only are we going to talk to Cindy as she's, she deals with OBGYN, she works in the OBGYN department, and she's been able to work on herself, learn what is going on in her, oh, that's right, nurse practitioner. Here we go. And <laughs> Cindy, thank you. You can just say, sorry, excuse me, I'm nurse practitioner. I don't know where I got... Uh, uh, physician's assistant, but nurse practitioner. And so uh, let me just bring her in since it is our sole purpose in life to give and receive love and knowledge. I am grateful to Cindy for coming on the show today to share how she is thriving with Lyme. And so thank you, Cindy, for coming on the show. Well, here I am. Yes, I am. am all the way up in Massachusetts. And yes, uh, you know, the whole story about physician assistants and nurse practitioners were just different type of uh, educational backgrounds, but uh, we kind of do the same thing. You do find more nurse practitioners in the realm of women's care. Yes, yes. And so today I shared with you that in the hearts of of Florida, we are dealing with uh, a serious epidemic that has struck our our country, our nation. We see it all the way around the world as well. But lately, it seems like it's happening in the United States more and more, these mass shootings. And so as a nurse practitioner, you probably see, and let's, let's put the Lyme disease aside for a second. I just want to say that Although I always say this is the best day ever, we may not feel that today is the best day ever, 
but looking back we will hopefully is to find the blessing in everything that happens in our life and i and i said to you um cindy you know although i want my listening friends to get to know you i'm sure you deal with day in and day out people who are depressed people who are raising children who are depressed some some people are not depressed and they're raising children who are depressed and there's so much stuff going on what when you hear about these massive shootings mass shootings what goes through your mind i'm devastated i i grew up in that time where you went out and played until the lights came on you walked to school even by yourself there was never even a thought of a threat so thinking about this and I'm thrilled that my children are older and that I don't have to worry about them going to school. This is, it's, it's, I can't, I can't even grapple at this. This is like so big and it saddens me. It saddens me because I have a granddaughter now who yes. will be in the school system. Yes. And that's what I was going to say. Yeah. You don't have to worry about your children, but your children's children, you know, I'm, I have grandchildren as well, and I want to make sure that they are safe. And there, Dale Bellis from Liberty HealthShare is going to join us later. And we're going to talk about the high cost of, of, of insurance, but people are not utilizing the services as much. They're refusing, but our costs go higher and higher. And the pharmaceutical industry keeps getting richer and richer. And not once, I, I don't, I've not heard this yet, but you know, we're exposing our children to violence at a very early age, at a very early age. And we don't think anything of it. You know, God forbid we would expose them to, to emotions and feelings and sex. But for some reason, violence you know, they they get rewarded for killing in these computer games um, and they get like awards and medals. And then when the children can't socialize, they put them on medications and drugs. And all of a sudden, we're surprised that these kids are behaving in a way that is not human. That is absolutely true. And the problem is we've created that. Yes, and we're going to continue our conversation with Cindy when we return worldwide at whenyouneedafriend.com. We'll be right here waiting for you. I didn't even look. I was the one that was like in I my thought. I was getting nervous. I was getting nervous. I was like, I can't really say much here. For my YouTube video, you know, you're probably watching the exchange that doesn't get out in there. But I, I just wanted to, to acknowledge that we are one. We are all one. What happens to you happens to me. And, and this is where we're going to continue with the Lyme and we, it'll, it'll feed into the, the Lyme experience that you've had. Now, I am so sorry. I got physician's assistant when you put an NP. I'm like, oh, you're also a naturopath. I didn't remember. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said NP. And then I was like, oh, no, I got to fix that. Nurse and, practitioner. And when I typed it in, I didn't see it come to the top. I was looking for the message to be on the bottom. I go, where did it go? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so living with Lyme. So today, my viewers, we are going to talk about none other than what happens, how to identify the signs um, how can someone recuperate from this? There's so many, talking about the pharmaceutical industry, um, I've known people that are diagnosed with fibromyalgia, right? Yeah, you know what? <clears throat> Go ahead. I call it fibromyas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad you said this off the air. You know, it's, and for people who have the diagnosis, I don't know if you know Dr. Mona Lisa Scholes, if you know Dr. Mona Lisa Scholes, or do you know Dr. Connealy? No, but it sounds like I do need to. Yeah, well, you know, they say, don't focus on the diagnosis. Oh. It's not about the diagnosis. And a lot of us think, oh, now I know what I have. I'm going to relax now and I'm just going to take the pill. But my registered service mark is you can take a pill or you can take responsibility. And it's not that I'm against the pill. I'm for doing everything like what you did. I'm sure that at first you became part of this enveloping culture of, take this pill, take this pill, take this pill. But now let's talk about the responsibility aspect of it. So I know that we're about to go back. Thank you, Brian, for keeping me honest, both before off the break and now you're the best. Okay. So for those of you who want to learn more about this book, it's the Bible for so many, as, as um, Cindy had said. Okay, here we go. I hear the music. Right here, wait. 
waiting for you. You can text Lillian McDermott or leave her a voicemail at 407-373-5959. Once again, here's Lillian. Welcome back to the Lillian McDermott Radio Show, where we always learn and grow together. Again, I just want to say that what happens to you happens to me. It's all about us. And that's the united spirit. And when somebody hurts, we all hurt. And today, um, Cindy Kennedy has experienced probably something that she never thought she'd have to deal with, which is, you know, they say that the, a healthy person has many dreams, but someone who's sick only has one, which is to get better. And this became Cindy Kennedy's dream. She um, has a website called Living with Lyme. She also um, does a podcast now. So what her, again, what I said, when, when something tragedy hits, at first, it may not look good. It may look like the worst day ever. But then as you look at it, you discover some blessings along the way and that will help you create the person you are today. And so today, Cindy, I'm grateful to you to come on the show to describe your experience so that we, what happens to you, happens to me, don't feel alone. So thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you. Thank you. And what happens to me, I do not want to have happen to you. Correct. And so that's the beauty of taking responsibility. And we were talking off the air about how you fall into this diagnosis. So I'm sure that when you started feeling bad, how was that from night to day? Explain the symptoms you were experiencing when you, um, well, at the time you didn't know what was going on. So what were some of the symptoms you were experiencing? I initiated this years and years ago with uh, a rapid onset of sort of vertigo and then double vision. I had extreme double vision, two fields of vision was ridiculous. So neurologically, they were concerned I had some organic thing going on in my brain. All that workup was fine. I put me on long-term steroids, everything corrected itself. And then I was kind of just more fatigued. And then you fast forward several, several years later, and that's when I guess it was the perfect storm and everything crashed. So I started with anxiety and a sleep deprivation issue. And, you know, I'm going from one provider to the next, to the next, and nobody is picking up the ball. Nobody is running with it. No one is accepting this as, oh, you know, this has got to be X, Y, or Z or looking more into it. They do their testing and, and move me on. And so it took years and years of struggling, struggling emotionally, Physically, the exhaustion is beyond explanation. There is no words for it. It isn't like mo what anything I could describe that someone would really actually understand. So it took from the, when the time was the absolute worst, it took four years for a diagnosis, and then the treatment was almost worse than the symptoms, and it would get to the point where I really thought I was going to die. And as I am just trying to get minute to minute through the treatment, and I thought I was going to die, I didn't. And at that point, I wished I had. Mm. So it's been a long struggle, lots of different treatment, lots of different care, uh, lots of complications. And here I am from a year ago, I am probably... 40, 50% better than a year ago, but still on my path of finding out what really is hindering my recovery. And we don't know. We just don't, do not know if this is something that is lifelong. Yes. No calls. Yes. And, and, you know, because you've been involved in the medical system, you probably had a lot of hope that the doctors that you went to were going to take care of you. And um, so how many diagnoses did you receive along the way? That's a great question. No one would actually give me a diagnosis. And the biggest problem is that standard Lyme testing is less than 50% accurate. Sure. And somewhere under 30% ever get a bullseye, which is that classic yeah, rash. Yeah, let's talk about the, the symptoms. So you get that classic rash, the bullseye. Yeah. And some people are very fortunate that their immune system, you know, for, first of all, maybe I did have a bullseye, but it could have been 
in the back of my head that I never saw. Yeah. You don't know. And, and the smallest of these infected uh, ticks are the size of a little poppy seed. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're going along and all these uh, allopathic or regular uh, mainstream medical people are just studying your tests. And if the tests are all saying, no, 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 they go, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And then, oh, well, let me have you see this person. Oh, your, your, your fingers are all swollen. You, you have wrist pain or elbow pain. You need a rheumatologist. And no one no one would go any further. And it actually wasn't until I was having bladder symptoms and saw a urologist who said, you know what, with what you're telling me, I want you to have a different type of test. So in that time, there were different tests coming up. And it was him that pushed me to get more testing. And that test was, um, there was some, some combined testing that really put the finger on this is an underlying Lyme illness. And of course, Lyme isn't just Lyme because it's not like, oh, I have a, an infectious respiratory thing. So two weeks of antibiotics, you'll be fine. This is something that the treatment also causes a lot more issues. So you're trying to you know, rid yourself of a problem, but you're actually causing a problem. And it does a wreak havoc on an immune system. So you stir up a lot of different things. And some people actually do kill off the Lyme. But then again, we don't know. That's the problem. Well, you know, and, and this is why it's important for us to become our own medical detective, our MD. And um, we were talking about off the air that when we receive a diagnosis, it's like, oh, I can relax now. Let me take a pill. But these pills cause a lot of side effects that now create another problem. So with you, at what point did you say, okay, um, let me learn a little bit more about Lyme. And I had mentioned uh, to you, because I, I distinctly remember when I was talking to you the first time that you had, I had mentioned Dr. Richard Horowitz and you said, oh, I want to get him for my podcast. And uh, he is a friend of the show. The book is called, How Can I Get Better? Now you call this your Bible. I do. Share a little bit more about that. His first book was, Why Can't I Get Better? Mm -hmm. And I found that helpful. It, there was a lot of different integrative stories and I didn't fit any of those mm -hmm. really. And uh, so when he came out with the second one, I found that I could find the information quicker. And truly, I part of this Lyme is this uh, retention of information. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'll say, oh, I get that. And then two days later, I was like, wait a minute, I don't get it. So it was really nice to have that book, you know, flip through it. Yeah find the information and share it. And actually people do call me. I get requests from patients or I get requests from patients, friends, family, or emails. I, uh, you know, I need more help. What else can I do? And I do have pathways. I don't have the, I don't have them all down pat yet. We're really working on that, but, but we do have, you know, more of an understanding and yeah. it's, it's becoming more enlightened in the eyes of mainstream medicine. There is a lot of things coming to light for them, but we still have the naysayers. Sure, sure. And he has the different uh, 16 point, 16 steps that you need to do, some testing to dig deeper and dig deeper. I mean, did you get to the point that you couldn't walk anymore, that you were just in bed all the time? How, how, at what point did you say, you know what, I've got to do something different? I fortunately, all of the neurologic symptoms, uh, on, yeah, I, was, I was happy to say, yes, I could walk. I never had any paralysis of that nature. I did have kind of mental status changes, kind of poor judgment. I would get lost. I wouldn't be able to string two sentences together. Wow. Uh, word find issues were certainly a uh, problem. Um, it was actually his questionnaire. He has a questionnaire and you kind of write, Dr. you know, Richard Horowitz questionnaire in the book. Yes, okay. yes, yes. That's what really set me on that direction. And yeah. So, so if I, you, if you have somebody, Cindy, that is going through the same thing that you're going through where doctors are going, I don't know what you have. I don't know what you have. I don't know what you have. Would you recommend that they get this book? How can I get better? Do the absolutely. questionnaire? 
And they can actually go to my website, uh, which is www.livingwithlime.us, go to the resource page, and his multi-question help to diagnose you is there. So you can take his test. That's great. That's great. And so, okay. So then that urine, uh, that urine test, what was the urine test that you took? Because he's talked about the urine test before on the show. Yeah. Exactly, but that test wasn't available back then. Uh, mm -hmm. it, was, it was thought that I did not have any type of an infectious nature. I had this chronic inflammation of the bladder, and there were tests coming out then called I-spot Lyme. And uh, because he was a urologist, I said, you know what, I really probably need to go to somebody that has a whole lot more knowledge in this field. And he you know, absolutely pushed me to that. So then I did go to a, a more holistic provider and, and get tested through a, a lab in California called Igenix. Igenix. Okay. So now go, moving forward, you started feeling better and now you have a new passion, which is to share this information with people. And the, if you think about who you are today, with after you've gone through this process to who you were before you got Lyme, tell us the, the blessing, the benefits or the downside of it. Just can you share with, with us? It's, it is a blessing in disguise. Yeah. It, it wasn't back in the beginning. Uh, it was, how do I survive a minute? How do I survive to get through another patient? How is it possible that I, as a healthcare provider, can't take care of myself? Mm -hmm. So, you know, stepping forward into what is now the information that I have learned, the information that has driven me to a passion to help people not be in my situation, uh, and, and encouragement by my husband and one of our good friends and the networking, it's, it's, I've thrived on that because I'm a people person. That's why I take care of people all day. And now I can actually, and I did this for years and my patients had no idea. And that's one of the biggest problems. Lyme people look okay. Yeah. We look okay. So family, friends, they walk away from us because they think we're loco and we're not loco. We have psychiatric issues, but it's not because we have a, a true psychiatric illness. We have underlying medical issues that lead to us to be depressed, to be anxious. And uh, so I am really happy. I'm fortunate. I have the capability. I've met some great people. Doug Foresta, who is my producer, mm -hmm. you can't get a better guy. He is down to earth, great sense of humor, and uh, works with me. Wonderful. Well, you know, it's good to know for those of you, my listening friends and my viewers as well, um, I want to encourage you to be your own MD, check out, do the, do the survey. You can go to livingwithlime.us and start your journey to getting better. Discover those levels, that layers that may be causing your illness that no one it can help you with other than you. And we're going to continue our conversation when we return worldwide at whenyouneedafriend.com. We'll be right here waiting for you. Okay, so Dell should be joining us anytime soon. So we'll, let's talk about, now you mentioned psychological issues that people think, oh, you're just making it up. Yeah. You know, they can't find anything wrong. Therefore, there should not be anything wrong with you. Now, in doing the show, I've learned, and there's the man, look at him. Hey, Dell, how are you? Good morning. Have you heard any of the conversation so far? Nope, just clicked into the meeting. Let's catch you up. I'm just grateful that you're on, and um, I will just pause here. The rec So as uh, I mentioned, uh, Dell Billis, the executive director of Liberty HealthShare, who is one of my sponsors, I'm excited to always have him on. Uh, we're talking, Dale, about Lyme disease and how you can get better. And of course, there's the book with, by Dr. Richard Horowitz. And one of the times that Dr. Horowitz was with us, you were with us as well. Indeed. And he was taking notes because he had never heard of Liberty HealthShare. And so he was taking notes. And I told Cindy about you and she was like, oh, I'm looking forward to hearing about this. So for those of you who um, are, I've met Dell before because you've watched some of the shows, um, we're going to talk about the high cost of insurance today and the article. And I'm very grateful to you, Dell, for 
sending those articles to me. They're really an incredible information. Sure. Thank you. It's, it's a pleasure, and I look forward to the discussion. Yes, yes. So um, Cindy um, had a disease. They didn't know what she had. And how long did it go on, Cindy? Well, from 2008 until now, we're probably working at 10 years, but the bulk of it was started in the fall of 2011. It wasn't until 2015 that somebody really acknowledged it and started some treatment. So can you imagine going that whole time with doctors mm. saying, I don't know what you got, Right. but let's do another test. Let's do another mm. test. Let's do another test. I don't, have, I don't know what you have, but what I wanted to say, Cindy, um, to, to add in. Brian, how much time do we have before we go on? Because I kind of get that feeling, 37 seconds. Okay. So, um, you know, the, the mental aspect, the emotional aspect that comes from the wearing you down, mm. you know, and uh, we've mm. learned on the Lone McDermott radio show that when you experience trauma, it records in your white blood cells and it stays in your body. And so there's a, 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 a way to release that and that's something that maybe we can talk off of the air or, you know, if, if, if you want to learn more about it. But I've had, uh, was, have you met Dr. Mona Lisa Scholes yet, uh, Dale? Have we had? No, her? I don't believe so. <clears throat> She's amazing. She's uh, a medical intuitive. Mm. Anyway, here we go. Time to dance. You can count on me. I'll be right here waiting for you. So let me do my intro for the show and, and then I'll reintroduce all of you. Or leave her a voice. Right. At 407 373 5959. Once again, here's Lillian. Welcome back to the Little McDermott Radio Show, where we always learn and grow with one another. And so far, our teacher has been Cindy Kennedy. She has shared her story. This is a thriving Thursday show um, where we are um, sharing stories of hope, where she did not know what she had, but yet she became her own medical detective. Ha. Huh. Mm -hmm. A concept. What a concept to become your own medical de detective. In order for you to do that, you must take 100% ownership and responsibility for your life. It's a must because if you give your power away, someone can abuse it and someone can take it and run for their benefit. And so we need to take responsibility for our life. And, and it's so wonderful that we have Del Billis, the executive director of Liberty HealthShare, joining us the second half of the show because it is so everything just r works together for the good. If you just, we just need to trust the process. I want to ask you to go to whenyouneedafriend.com and become part of this movement where we take 100%, not 99, not 50, 100% responsibility for our life. I know what you're saying. I know what you're thinking. It's not my fault I got sick. It's not about fault, blame, shame, or duty. It's about figuring out what to do with it once you are in the situation that you're in. And so I want to go encourage you to go to whenyouneedafriend.com. While you're there, please check out my sponsors because without my sponsors, this show would not happen. Make sure you go there, check it out, see how you can support my sponsors. Go to whenyouneedafriend.com. You can check onto my videos for YouTube, subscribe there, subscribe on my show, like my, my uh, social media, and you can call, leave a message, at 407-373-5959. There is so many ways to stay connected. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I hope that you will take advantage of this movement. Let's create this movement. And there's another movement out there that is storming. It's just hitting the world by storm. And it's this awareness, this awakening that we are empowered, that there are people that want to keep us down. So today, Del Billis, we're going to talk about an article that he shared with me that is fabulous. And Del, thank you so much. The executive director of Liberty HealthShare is always a pleasure to have you on. Such a pleasure to be with you, Lillian. Thank you for the invitation. Now, as you, this article that was uh, written so beautifully, it makes us aware that people are changing the way they, they work with the medical field. Can you share a little bit about the article and what caught your eye the most on it? Yeah, there's two elements uh, to this study, uh, and, and that is that utilization of traditional health care in the most recent data that we've had, uh, which is 2016, was down. Mm -hmm. So the utilization, access of healthcare, et cetera, 
had decreased. Now that's a remarkable trend to acknowledge. Yes. Because that says one the the the, the cause of that was was not delineated, but we can uh, I guess we can conjecture. Mm -hmm. It's not that people are suddenly not getting sick anymore. Yeah. It's because I think there is, in fact, an awareness that you contribute to that I'm so grateful about, Thank Lillian, you. that there are alternative means for meeting our health care needs. Uh, and taking responsibility for the care of our health is absolutely fundamental to controlling costs. That's Absolutely. number one. Absolutely. Now, well, what's unique about this, the yeah. second half of that study showed yes. that even though utilization was down, prices and costs in the marketplace continued to skyrocket and rise. So that juncture of those two issues goes to show that there is dysfunction in our current healthcare system, that if we use uh, the, the systems less, our costs continue to skyrocket and soar. There's some reasons for that that we can dig into, uh, but but the, those two uh, opposing concepts, I'm grateful for having the opportunity to chat about because it points to one of the most fundamental flaws that exist in our healthcare world. Absolutely, and this article was written by Healthcare Costs Institute, the HCCI, and they are an independent, nonpartisan research organization. So it wasn't written by someone who wants to sell their pills or someone that was wanting to, to benefit from this article. It's creating an awareness that, and even Cindy, Cindy was sharing with me that she, uh, go ahead, Cindy, go ahead and share what you had said earlier about people refusing um, help? Well, two things. One of the things that I do want to say is because issues pertaining to Lyme disease many years ago, insurance companies were going after physicians because they were treating out of the normal standard of care. So they were losing their license. So what did they do? They decided to stop taking insurance. So the burden of payment became the patients. And there are people out there that have leveraged their home, their retirement, their savings to pay for their care. And they can no longer do this. We need to have the ability to process our specialty labs, like the one that I talked about through Igenics. Uh, you need to be able to get your insurance to at least own some of that. The cost is absolutely incredible. Well, this is what's so beautiful about Liberty Health Share. Dale, you guys embrace holistic health. So share a little bit about that with Liberty yeah, We do. We are a nationwide nonprofit uh, 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 association of health conscious, health aware men and women who pay each other's medical bills based upon our ethical and religious spiritual values and beliefs. The first and foremost of which is we must take care of our bodies because our bodies are temples and we have a moral and spiritual obligation to care for our health. Uh, and so that focuses the attention of our community uh, on discovering helpful and meaningful ways outside of conventional care, if necessary, to care for our health. Lyme disease, I'm so I'm fascinated by this discussion because Lyme disease, as you've just said, Cindy, uh, has not been recognized as truly impactful in peace in individuals' health not even knowing how to treat it. Liberty Health Share has been instrumental uh, in, in uh, medical tourism, directing our members who have been diagnosed to overseas and out of the country practitioners who have uh, successfully treated these conditions, uh, and we facilitate that connection that to assist our members to find solutions and care in this particular area. I have a classic example. In Go fact, uh, one of our board members' wives, who has suffered uh, with Lyme disease for years, not even having it diagnosed nor recognized, uh, was directed to a treatment a clinic uh, in a neighboring country that we facilitated that care uh, and today she is thriving, surviving, and doing incredibly well 
because of our willingness as a community to seek out those additional uh, uh, levels and, and types of care, naturopathic and otherwise. Yes, and, and I want to add to what you just said, Dale. You know, when you are um, talking like this, we would think, oh my gosh, this is going to cost a lot. You guys have kept the cost of health share, health care, not sick care, which is what I call insurance now, but you embrace this at a very low rate because you have figured out how to bring down the cost and we benefit from that. Share a little bit about that so that Cindy and all my listening friends can hear how Liberty Health Share has been able to keep their costs down. It's really a three-legged stool, uh, Lillian, and that is, first of all, uh, if if it's our money, I heard Cindy say a moment ago about uh, self-pay patients having to address this care, uh, but their resources being quickly exhausted. <laughs> We are all in Liberty Health Share self-pay patients. Yes. We're responsible for our own care and our own costs. We just simply choose to share those expenses in community with one another. So we're backed up by 90,000 households across America who are paying each other's medical bills. So it's our money at stake. We've got skin in the game. That changes the consumption as well as uh, the mentality when we go uh, access healthcare. As we, if it's our dollars, I'm going to review the cost, evaluate yes. the plan, eliminate unnecessary care, all of those sorts of dynamics because it's my money at stake. That's number one. Number two uh, is that we're health conscious. Uh, we're, we're health aware. Now, that doesn't mean we're all healthy, but we're on the path towards health, wellness, and the care of uh, our bodies. Uh, and so health conscious people typically have fewer bills, recover more quickly, uh, and uh, go to the hospital less, et cetera. And so that reduces costs. The third is that we, we have a billing problem in America today. A uh, few people realize that what a hospital will send out as a bill or a doctor will send out as a bill uh, is not what they will receive to resolve or uh, finalize that care. And so we combine all three of those uh, and produce a much lower cost profile because, frankly, we have 90,000 cost containment units, our households, because it's our money. And I want to add to that. When I go to buy something, I want the best deal. And with Liberty Absolutely. Health Share, when I know I'm going to get a, a, a procedure or anything to that effect, I'm going to look for my self-pay, and I'm going to go to the one that is the best doctor at the best prices, and I will make my decision, not anybody else. And we're going to continue our conversation with Del Billis, Cindy Kennedy, when we return worldwide at whenyouneedafriend.com. We'll be right here waiting for you. And Cindy, a million yes. dollar per incidence. Up to a million dollars per incidence. I've where, had people. Where yeah. can you find that with insurance? I'm not, I'm not sure because the standard cost, if you laid it out and you have the ability to pay, is going to be 200, 300, 350,000. You can go to Germany for <clears throat> their treatments, and that's probably 40 grand at a whack. Um, you know, People have lost and are devastated. One of the biggest things my husband and I are dealing with uh, is trying to help people stay together. And so our topic, and we're, we've been at uh, several discussion groups or support groups, and we're going on to a large conference, and it is Surviving Lyme as a Couple. How, mm. Kim Hill, do you learn to be together? Well, and your sickness. Yesterday's show for Valentine's Day, most people would do a sappy little Valentine's show. My husband was my co-host, and he and I are presenters for a worldwide marriage encounter. We, we were. Um, and, and so we are very familiar with that ministry. But there's another ministry called Retrovi. And, it's, and if you go to um, helpourmarriage.org, I think that's the, the website, and I'll, I'll get it for you in a second, but helpourmarriage.org. And they help marriages in crisis deal with how to communicate, deal with losses, deal with, and it's a process and nobody, nobody is rejected. Cost, they don't reject. Cause just like with uh, Liberty Health Share, someone has paid for you 
And if you can afford it, you will pay for somebody else. Paying That's it how they work. Paying it forward. Yes. And so there's a, a, a huge theme, a huge theme, which is we need to help each other. And Dale, we were talking about the shooting. One of the things that I keep talking about on the show that I don't know if anybody else agrees with me, but we give our children toys, um, video games that are very real, hmm. that get rewarded if they kill somebody. We also, these kids are not socially of, uh, uh, you know, not socially capable of interacting. So what do they do? They give them pharmaceutical pill. So now you've given them a combination of, of drugs that are mind altering, plus a game that come together creates these mass shootings. I, I, I don't know if anybody else is thinking about this, but certainly that's what my intuition and my gut says. I join you in that uh, alarm. It's a cultural issue. Uh, and we as a culture, uh, advertisers spend billions of dollars to influence behavior based upon their advertising. It's ludicrous to believe that those kinds of influences that you just pointed out doesn't influence behavior because yeah. it certainly, certainly does. Yes. Uh, and to have that kind of cultural activity impacts behavior. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Or leave her a voicemail at 407-375-5959. Once again, here's Lillian. I am so excited today to have both Cindy Kennedy and Del Billis on the show. Del Billis is the executive director of Liberty HealthShare. As you know, I am, they are, I am a proud recipient of Liberty HealthShare. I Absolutely love them. I've been a member for two years and I promote health share, Liberty Health Share. I pay less for my insurance, quote unquote insurance, what you would call insurance, I call health care, not sick care. I am rewarded for being healthy and I am so grateful that not only am I a member, but Liberty Health Share is a sponsor of the Little McDermott Radio Show and how we keep the cost down. Now, we were talking, Dale, about this article. And thank you, Cindy, yes. also for joining us and sharing how you've been able to thrive with Lyme. And, you know, one of the things that this article talked about was prescription drugs. Share a little bit about the prescription drugs and what it's doing now, the, what, the, what they discovered in this independent, nonpartisan study. Yeah, there is a serious flaw in our healthcare system, uh, Lillian, and, and it relates to the article you've just pointed out mm -hmm. showing this disruption between lower usage but higher cost. It's what I call the third party pay system. That is, somebody else is paying the bill. If I send my money away to an insurance company or it's provided for me by an employer or the government pays for my health care, I don't have any engagement. Uh, in fact, I'm insulated both from the care and the costs. Now that's the absolute reverse of what we must do in America in taking care of our own health. We must, it must be a customer controlled healthcare system, not a third party controlled system. Yes. And so if the insurance company is paying for my bills, I number one, don't know what the costs are. I'm not motivated to control the expense. I don't ask the questions uh, relative to my care and treatment plan. I just, my, my motivation typically is the trend is just take care of me. Yeah. And so care decisions are made by metacrats about my care as opposed to exerting my own uh, uh, will and making decisions in my best interest. That's the flaw. And so this uh, article points out the fact that based upon the protection of their business interests, insurance companies keep driving up the cost even though usage is down. Yes. It relates the same to drug usage and prescriptions because they're the, the natural reflex of physicians, unfortunately, is to prescribe drugs uh, that are popular that they've just heard about from their from their drug manufacturer representative who was just in their office. Yeah. Uh, that becomes the the reflex. 
That's why we must take back control of the care of our health. Uh, and and be a disruptive patient, frankly. Absolutely. Absolutely. Ask the questions. Evaluate the care. If medicine or if drugs are a useful uh, pathway to recovery of our health, then let's ask the kinds of penetrating questions we need to ask as a consumer, as the customer, uh, not only driving costs downward, uh, but making sure uh, that, that that particular uh, allopathic medical treatment system uh, is in our best interest, or if there are other alternative means. Well, you know, I, I want to add to what you're saying. First of all, for those of you who are listening to Del Bellis, he's the executive director of Liberty Health Share. Liberty Health Share is a sponsor of my show. I'm also a member for the last two years. Um, if you are interested, you can call 855-58-LIBERTY. That's 855-585-4237. Or you can go to libertyhealthshare.org, org, libertyhealthshare.org. And of course, you hear the commercials on my show all the time. But I want to add to what you're saying, Dale. I know that if I want to buy a car, I am going to go to a place that's going to give me a good deal. I know what car I want, and I want the, the quality that I want, right? And so... If I look at that car, I'm not going to go to the same car and go get it more expensive in another place. It doesn't make any sense to me. No. But that's exactly, we have lost the connection of cash. So when I pay cash for something versus put it on my credit card, there's a disassociation of that connection with money. And because somebody else is paying our bill, we want everything that's on the menu. And so with that in mind, I, I love the fact that Liberty Health Share keeps costs down. Cindy, did you have something that you wanted to add? I want to just say two things. One is as a healthcare provider, I have to deal with these insurance companies who are telling patients what they can and what they can't have, even if it's not in their best interest. Mm -hmm. Recently, my husband had an issue, and part of the test that should have been done uh, was not done. And uh, they said that, no, they won't cover this part. You have to do this part first, which makes no sense. Why don't you go or include the area that isn't going to delay a certain treatment that may be very much cost-effective in the long run? If you find out quicker what's wrong, you can take care of it quicker. And that's what I talk to my patients about a breast cancer who are not willing, oh, I can't, I can't afford another, another film, another diagnostic test. My insurance won't pay for it. I'm like, the quicker you find something, the better the outcome. And we're not these insurance companies are not designed to do that because they have to save. They have to pinch pennies because uh, as you go higher up the food chain, that's where you see uh, padding of the pockets, should I say. Absolutely. And there is an option. There is an alternative. This is another, this is my commitment to you, my listening friend, my viewers, that I'm going to figure out different options. And then just because I say it, don't, it's not the truth for you. You make it. You do your own research. I encourage you to do the research. I encourage you to go to libertyhealthshare.org and check it out. I wouldn't be on it. I wouldn't use it myself. I would not promote anything I would not use myself. So I want to encourage you to go to 855-58-LIBERTY because, um, Dell, if I need a test and it's not recognized by the insurance, I call Liberty HealthShare and what happens? What happens is we have an entire uh, unit overseen by a doctor to provide counsel and advice to our members. We're not there to block treatment. We're there to provide advice and in input to give uh, an advisory to our members as to what is in their best interest in terms of uh, what is indicated in terms of their medical condition and to help because it is a complex process. Most of us are not medical professionals. So we need someone advocating on our, on our behalf, not interrupting our care, giving us that advisory. Once we determine that's in our best interest in terms of our care and our health, then where to go do that at the most advisable price. Uh, and so we, we call that member stewardship assistance. Yes. Uh, and it's a toll-free number our, our members use. Uh, and we consistently uh, assist our members in navigating what is now a very complex 
medical process and medical system, uh, but we're there to give them advocacy and help and support. You know, Adele, I, I'm, every time I, you come on the show, I get so excited because <laughs> it is something different and new. And that's what we talk about on the Lone McDermott Radio Show. Talk about like-mindedness. And um, when, when, you, when we talk about something, uh, a, a new truth, we need to change the way we look at health care. And we need to, we get to empower ourselves and say, you know what? This isn't supporting me. I remember paying, you know, so much money a month for stuff that I wasn't using. Then there was so much out of pocket, which by the way, this article also talks about out of pocket expenses yes. and they're astronomical. And so it, I was apprehensive at first. I was so curious about this Liberty Health Share because of an interview I did. Talk about a perfect, you know, trusting the process. And once I said, you know what, I did my research, I went ahead and tried it. My costs for what I called insurance or health care went down dramatically, so much so that I rejected to be added on to my husband's insurance. And so I am paying $200 a month. And after the non-share of $500, Liberty Health Share pays 100%. And so thank you so much, Liberty Health Share and Del Bellis for doing what you guys do. Thank you so much. It is an honor to be with you, Lillian. God bless. Okay. For those of you, thank you, Cindy, for being on the show. It's time to go. Please remember, I'll be right here waiting for you worldwide at whenyouneedafriend.com. This is Lillian McDermott wishing you love, peace, joy, and unexpected abundance. Make it the best day ever. Ever. Good job. Good job. <laughs> you know, it's, it's amazing. What's happening in the world, what happens to you happens to me. And I love this fellowship. I, I didn't say this on the air because I saw that we were running out of time, Dell. but I got another call from Liberty Health Share asking if I was okay, you know, seeing if everything was fine and, and wanting to, to ask me about how, how was the, what was going on. And, and I'm like, are you guys for real? Are you guys for real? <laughs> My insurance doesn't care less. It could, could care less what was happening to me. You're one in a gazillion. That's a lot of zeros. <laughs> yes. Yes. So Cindy, this is, this is what I promote on my show. And I'm glad that you were on a show that you got to learn about Liberty HealthShare because now maybe you can promote it with your patients as well. I would love that. Dale. Yes. Yeah. Guest on my show. Oh, I'd be honored. Uh, I, I need uh, I need your contact info and uh, we got to do this. This is, right. this yeah. is, Extremely important. And I'll tell you, if ever uh, I have a wonderful nurse in my practice who would, is just a delight. So if you ever need a nurse to help with your patients, you just need to let me know and I'll introduce you to her. Well, let's get to know one another better. Yeah. better. L Lily, you have both of our contact information. If you wouldn't mind I will just send forwarding to uh, Cindy. Uh, my uh, contact information. Be glad to follow up on that. I will. I will. I'm so grateful to both of you. Dale, this was a switch. Did you like coming on after the end and saying- I Ever? loved it. I really <laughs> did. I loved it. Thank you. <laughs> it's the benefit of being at the end. <laughs> and that article really did give us some meat for discussion, didn't it? It was you know, good. I think we need to be uh, have everybody aware that this article, I will tell you, because we're still recording here, I will say that this article- um, if you, you can find the article at, uh, you know what? I am going to post it on Facebook. I'm trying to find the article, but it's by JM. I had it written down here. Here we go. Let me see. Uh, I've got it here, but for some reason my screen won't go to it. What's going on here? Okay, here we go. Liberty Hill Share with my Americans use. Okay. It's on the, uh, www.ajmc.com. Yeah. And uh, the article is called Americans Use Less Care in 2016, but Healthcare Costs Still Soared, Reports Say. That's the yeah. article. And so I will post it on my Facebook page and share it. Thank you so much. And, and from time to time, it's wonderful to have these discussions on the air, but we need to be empowered. So thank you, Cindy, for sharing today. Thank you. And I will mention once again, for those of you who want to learn more about 
Liberty Health Share. The number is 855-58-LIBERTY or 5 or 855-585-4237. That's libertyhealthshare.org. Thank you so much for um, God bless. And watching this video today. And I look forward to our next conversation.